I just arrived at a boat landing here in west central Minnesota and uh, you may have noticed the hat. I actually fished with a couple of fellows last year. We did a show, Dustin Carlson and Super Dave Williamson. They're both guides here in Minnesota. We had one of the best shows ever, probably the best show ever as far as visual activity. The only problem that I really saw with the whole thing is that uh, I didn't catch any muskies. I actually caught one nice walleye, so Gary and Keith would be proud of me, but uh, no muskies. Those guys like cleaned up everything in front of me. I'm telling you, they, on a serious note, they really are two tremendous anglers. The only problem is when you're in the back of the boat behind them, they don't leave many scraps behind. But this particular deal is a little different. We're on a really deep lake here. We're gonna try some deep water stuff, hopefully deep weeds, more of a plastics bite, where the old guy in the back might be able to scrounge up a fish or two. I think I can get it done on oh, this skunk hat that I'm wearing from last year, I'm hoping to be taking that off and replacing it with the pink hat here shortly. We'll show you the next bite. Often in fishing, the little details surrounding a bite can make all of the difference. Those who are up for analyzing and sorting through these details, especially when conditions aren't ideal, at the very least are giving themselves a fighting chance for a successful day out on the water. We've got a lake that's got a lot of deep water, a lot of deep forage out here, and we're setting up quite deep. The boat position is gonna be in the 22 to 25 range, and then we're working some deeper weeds kinda on the base of the break. That's where we're gonna start out trying to pattern things. There's, there's weeds all the way down to like 22 feet of water here in different patches, so plastic baits mainly we're starting with, but anything that'll get down there a little bit. We wanna let the baits sink a little bit, hopefully get into or right over those weeds, work them back slow, and we're just gonna try a variety of things maybe some deep spinners that type of thing as well and we've got shallower options here too more of the primary break if we have nothing here deep we may go in and hit the primary and maybe cast both ways but we're going to start out deep here first and see what's going on knowing the lay of a lake is pretty important for narrowing down your choice of lures but there isn't any substitute for time on the water which can reveal information such as bait fish hot spots ideal foraging areas for an apex predator such as muskies we just pulled up to this spot the root beer float uh, the spot's been really good all year for some reason it's just had a ton of bait fish on this break line and uh, we weren't here for more than five minutes we were all kind of working our soft plastics and you know looked over at Pete and he his rod buckled over when it first hit I didn't think it was much but he might have I'm ready when you are it. Pete oh, well he's not ready Pete said he had one on and all of a sudden the fish just right at the side of the boat his rod was doubled over and I, I knew Pete had a, a nice fish on he wasn't sure what how big it was but I could definitely tell it was a nice fish there you yeah. go, buddy. <laughs> nice fish that nice cool. fish <laughs> nice work man yeah, just a weird hit man yeah. just a tick on the, I was I was rising up and it just when I let it settle it was thunk. right on oh, the pause good. he's off the bait perfect I love a yeah yeah definitely on the pause. He's got a little girl to him. Yeah, nice oh, fish. That's a fatty. Nice fish. Well, that fish was pretty deep, guys. I'd say. Oh, boy, look at the girth on that. That is a tub. That is going to be a mean nasty someday. Actually, it already is a mean nasty. It's got the attitude. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> Add about uh, 30 pounds to this guy. And state record time. <laughs> We've been eating, boys. Her belly's full. Yes, she is. <laughs> she nice goes. work, Pete. Yeah, got the skunk out of the boat. Nice First man. one of the day. Yeah. The next bite is brought to you by Mercury, number one on the water. 
Amsoil, the first in synthetics. Tracker Boats, Fish, the finest. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. Berkeley, catch more fish. Mustang, stay sharp longer. Lowrance, find, navigate, dominate. Motor Guide, never stop. Strike King, number one in fishing lures and power pole. Swift, silent, secure. The technology of electronics and, and how you can use it to help you, especially when you're on a new body of water. But I always talk about for musky fishing, looking for the food a lot. That's important. Knowing how sharp a brake line is can be another real important thing. The other thing I look for a lot is obviously structure like weeds and rocks. And one thing that's particularly interesting that's been real successful for me in recent years is finding real deep weeds and sand grass, that type of thing. Fishing some of this deeper structure. If you can use the sides scanning technology to determine when you're fishing a spot for the first time where the actual breaks are when you're positioning your boat so you can hopefully cover everything. I'm running four screens right here right now. I've actually got my chart up, I've got my sonar up, I've got my down scan and side scan. What I've got here is a particularly interesting thing. I saved this screenshot and you can see my, my chart here. Uh, that's one thing that's great about this down scan and side scan though is that the chart isn't always completely accurate. Uh, you can see on the sonar area here we've got some stuff down there. You might consider it stuff. You're not sure exactly what that is maybe. It's, it, it's a combination of, of fish and weeds to me but you look here on the down scan and you can see that those are actually weeds mainly with a few little fish sitting in there. Now on the side scan with this super sharp break that we have I find it particularly interesting because you can see this is the, the base of the break, basically the bottom here, and you can see some of these, these weeds that showed up over here on the down scan. So if you want to position your boat to where you're actually covering up onto the flat and basically, let's say, halfway back on your retrieve, hitting that sharp break and finishing your ret retrieve in the deep water, you know exactly where that sharp break is. If it's 20, 30, or 40 feet away, and it really helps for boat positioning. Knowing where to look is important, but with muskies, you could be looking all day at the best structure ever without getting much in return. Magic hour is magic hour, but with muskies, it's a little different and more complex than with other freshwater species. What a great morning. We haven't been fishing more than 10 minutes, have we? No. Sun and moon, rise and set times play a major factor in supplementing pairing your best spots, or spots that just look right on the graph, with a heightened natural chance at a bite. Got one, got one, got one, Dave. Hey, there we go. I'll get the net, Dave. Oh yeah, that's sounding good. Super oh. Dave's on the board. Super uh, Dave. Oh, uh, it got smaller. What happened to it? It got smaller. Get it in there. In there. We're on the board again, Dave! <laughs> it might be a bit hard to see in the dark and with the camera so close, but Dave's deep water spinner catch is a perfect example of a really nice sized musky. Oh, he's a heavy girl. Nice fish, Dave. Woo! Nice fish. Nice fish. <laughs> right at last Look at light. Girth on that thing. Right at last light, I love he's it. He's a solid fish. Had the moon rise in our favor, Dave? Oh, yeah. Nice. Supposed to get her back in? Yep. Yeah, I'm going back. Experts presented by Amsoil. <laughs> Twin power poles down. I'm pegged alongside a little channel that goes underneath a bridge from lake to lake. That's a very popular area for walleyes because there's usually a current that creates itself in between as that water flows back and forth underneath the bridge. And my favorite techniques for working areas like this, obviously one would be jigging, and then I've got another technique I'm gonna tell you about in a minute that's pretty cutting edge stuff. But let's start off with the jigging part. Essentially, I just work the area, the little deeper edges and, and basin of that channel. And I cast with a typical jigging stroke, and uh, normally I'll be using two and a half or three inch gulp minnows. But let me show you, this is a new tail, it just came out. Uh, it's become one of my favorite tails now, especially when the, jig, uh, when the jig bite is real aggressive. When the fish are really on, I like to go to this tail. 
One of the reasons it's more durable, I can get a lot more fish on it, work it through the snags and it doesn't come off as easy. One of the really cool things is how flexible this tail is. I'm using a gold, it's called a clear golden shiner color because this lake system is tannic. It's kind of tea colored water. But when I'm in uh, a situation where I'm in a clear water area, I like to use the black shad. It looks like a normal minnow. And I think people who have followed me know that I like to use those natural colors in clear water. The other technique that's really cool is kind of an adaptation of an old style technique, a river technique, that has a new twist to it. This is a blade bait, and I mean people who walleye fish a lot, especially on the Mississippi system, uh, other places where there's current, know how to use these baits. Basically, they were always fished vertically, kind of straight up and down, and you, you kind of jerk them hard and they fall back and you get bites on them. Well, the new adaptation is the fact that they end up being casted. I mean, that is the cutting edge technique right now. I learned it by fishing on the Mississippi this spring in a big tournament, and all the local guys were doing this. They were casting these little blake bigs, so I started trying it, but it's real easy to work. You, you work it kind of like a fast jig, and you just cast it out. But if you watch my rod here, I'm jerking it in little jerks, and if I can, if the bottom's not real snaggy, I'll let it hit the bottom every time. But every time I'm making a jerk like this, a drrr, drrr, I can feel that blade bait vibrating. I can be fishing in an area with a jig and then take out this little fin fisher and cast it, and all of a sudden you get a lot bigger fish. I don't know why that is, but it's pretty common. So cutting edge tournament technique, brand new one, and then a brand new bait for the jigging. They work really good. Hopefully, I'm gonna check a lot of these bridges today. By the time I get done with the day, I'm hoping I have a few fish. This musky trip to Western Minnesota for ESOC's expert Pete Mena and professional guides Dustin Carlson and Super Dave Williamson has so far been a classic breakdown of how to start from the ground up on piecing together a musky bite from scratch. All right, guys. Yeah. Good morning, Peter. You're looking stately this morning. Thank you. Thank you very much. Having covered key starting areas and successfully highlighting how windows of opportunity can aid your chances in a big way, utilizing boat side retrieval techniques like figure eights and O's are always another powerful advantage. But even those with the most practiced retrieves can never fully avoid the sting of a not so stung muskie. Gar, gar, gar. Whoa, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Woo, that was a giant. And the inevitable heavy words and heavier heart that follow. Ah. They just come unbuttoned sometimes. Either way, always being on guard for a close combat boat side hit is important, no matter which way the wind blows. I saw it. I saw it. Yeah, right on the elm turn, right at the side of the boat. That was exciting. Whoa, doggy, she's bulldogging and peeling, dragging. You're not going anywhere. Whoa, she's running underneath the boat, Pete. Oh, hang on there. That was an awesome strike. Oh, yeah, she wanted it. Ready, Super Dave? Yeah. Get him, right. Dave. Yeah. She came out right awesome. at the boat on the L turn, and all I saw was a mouth wide open, a big white mouth, and just inhaled the bucktail right at my feet. And you know, that is how important it is to do those L turns right at the boat in a figure eight. That was exciting. Just oh, awesome. Oh, dude, I, I, I saw her before you did it. It was so cool. He were just starting to go in the L turn, and she was coming right along, right in my face, just whoa, come up to grab it. I mean, it was cool. One of the challenges of musky fishing is really just trying to pattern fish and it's especially tough when you've got a real low density critter like a musky so always thinking of different things and one of the factors that we pay a lot of attention to is wind. Now it's been common knowledge for quite a while that you kind of want to fish the windy side of the lake and to a certain extent that you could say that's a good idea all the time but I always kind of like to think about it in terms of how long it's been blowing in the same direction. I'm 
Much more excited about it when it's been blowing the same direction for a couple of days. Move that whole system, starting with the plankton and the minnows and everything. A lot of times it will actually, after a while, start to stack up bait fish and you're always looking for the food. The more it's hitting perpendicular to the break, the more I like that situation. And then also if it's hitting a, a point directly, any distinct points or also any distinct inside turns, if that wind's been funneling in there for a long time, that's a really good way to look for fish. Pay attention to that and look for other spots on the lake just like that. Hot Topics, leading information on tackle and techniques to make you a better fisherman. Presented by Mercury. When I switch in my engines, I like to run the best in my boat. I think a lot of people would assume I'd pick my 300 Verado. You know, it's really, really fast. It's got great acceleration for out in the big waves. It's just flat out fun to run. But to tell you the truth, the engine I like the best is my 99 Kicker. And the reason that I like it so much is because when I'm using it, I'm fishing. Now the beauty of this 99 kicker is that it's a four stroke and I think that's real important for your kicker because it's got no smoke, it's not burning any oil so that makes it more comfortable but yet it runs very very smooth and very very quietly so that you're not spooking the fish. Now this particular kicker, the Pro Kicker, has some features on it that make it really really convenient for fishing. For example, when I pull up to a spot I simply use the trim and tilt in it to put the engine down quickly. It's got an electric start on it so I don't have to be pulling a cord and then what I really like is this handle. Not only does it control the throttle, but it actually has got shift right on it too. I prefer to use this tiller one so that it can more quickly run this boat steering it, for example, on contours and things like that. When you're ready to leave, it's also got some features that are nice. It's got a strapping system in here that does a couple of things for you. First of all, when you're trimming up the engine, it actually self-centers that engine so that it's sitting on the bracket real securely. Plus, as it comes up, those straps come tight and that locks it into position. So when I'm running across rough water, this engine is just sitting back there, stable as heck, not getting itself all beat up. So a kicker is great for walleye fishing. It runs the speeds you need to fish any kind of trolling that you want. With the Pro Kicker, you got a lot of features in it to make it a lot nicer to be out fishing. Like the mood of the fish, so many external factors change from day to day out on the water. I could tell by those head shakes at first. I was like, whoa. But grinding it out with Dustin Carlson and Dave Williamson here on this Cisco Forage Base Lake in western Minnesota, every clue to the puzzle is welcome, even the unexpected. You know, yesterday we were finding them a little bit deeper, and today they they're with this cloud cover that we have out. They're all sitting right up on that break line. Pete, that's a that sure is a pretty little guy, isn't he? Spots Look on that, that fish. Those are incredible. In the fins is what's really cool yeah. too. We're fishing a Cisco Tulabee based lake that I guide here in west central Minnesota. The Cisco's and Tulabees are a cold water species and they really only push shallow uh, later in the year in November. So typically they're out on uh, deep break lines on uh, structure adjacent near deep water. Fishing with the boat in 25 to 30 feet of water, just clipping the, the deep edge of that structure and working the baits real deep, low and slow. And a lot of guys get intimidated by a bite like this because it's just something they're not used to. But if you come to a lake like this, I highly recommend, you know, you give it a day, try it out, it's gonna put some big fish in the boat for you. Even having made all of the assumed right moves, it's been hours since Pete, Dustin, and Dave have had as much as a sniff from a muskie or even a pike, but staying in the zone with each cast as much as possible. Somebody raised a nice fish. Really pays off as Pete catches a fish out of the corner of his eye. There she is, there she is. As someone's retrieve raises the attention of at least one or more muskies interest long enough. Fish. Got him, Pete. That's yeah. a good one. I got the net. That Pete is able to pick him off, and it feels like it finally might be another of the size of muskie they have been working so hard for. On there? Oh, yeah. I don't know. No, no, no. She's not yet. I think she's got some different ideas. She... <laughs> I'm hanging on. I'm hanging on. She's man. going deep. Okay. Now, at least she's where we can see her. Oh, get in there. There you go. Oh, God. Right. No, he got it. 
the net and all of a sudden she turned to swim out of the net. <laughs> yeah, she almost made it. I don't know if There's you just like you just had here. one up. Dan oh, just I had mean, one up and I had one up. And after oh. a long day, the thing may have just like right, crazy. right. Yeah, that's a nicer fish than I thought. Oh yeah, a really nice fish, Pete. <laughs> really nice that fish. That was cool. That was cool. What a hit. I don't have a whole lot of teeth. They're kind of dull. Must have been eating shellfish or something in here. <laughs> but that was fun. I'll tell you what. Whoa, waving goodbye here. I guess that means release. When they're underneath the boat, I'll tell you, you're starting to wonder there's little drag going, you know? That's like, I'm trying to turn the bow so I get the fish out here where you could net her. And then you had to basically scoop it underneath the boat. Yeah, that was a little challenging of a net job, to say the least. Somewhat tense for a minute, but we got it in we there. We got her in the net, absolutely. Ah, pike. What do you got, Pete? I think we got pikas not so enormous. Sing me that song, you piano man. Take over, Greg. Greg. There's nothing coming. You know? <laughs> ah, gotcha! <sighs> Super Dave! Uh, uh, <laughs> You gotta get a vista of that in there. Oh. oh, this right. spot, this, that, and the other. The next bite would like to thank Dustin Carlson, Dave Williamson, and Sunset Beach Resort. For more info on Dustin or Dave, visit NorthlandMuskyAdventures.com or MuskyStalker.com. For more on Sunset Beach Resort, please visit SunsetBeachResort.net.